Hey, in this episode of the On That Net Show, I'm gonna have my buddy Brady joining me, and he's gonna show us all about the new worker templates that are inside of Visual Studio 2019 and .NET Core 3.0. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the On.Net Show. And today, we have our, my good buddy Brady coming on, who's gonna to talk to us about worker templates. Mm -hmm. What worker are worker templates? templates? What are worker templates? Uh, well, I've got a doc page pulled up. It's always a great place to start. Docs are a good place docs to start. Are good. Um, so essentially, a worker template is kind of whatever you want it to be. So um, in the past, if you had something like a, like a web queue worker, type scenario sure. where you've got a web app and the web app's dropping stuff in a queue mm -hmm. and you want your web app to be fast. And you need a thing to process those messages and whatnot. That's where Worker comes in. Got it. So in the past, you and I would probably write what? Like like a Windows service or, or uh, like a Bash show. Or a console. Console app. Console app. File okay. new console application. File new console app. Yeah. So essentially, this is kind of your file new console application for mm -hmm. the microservice folks like you and I. If you need to write like a background service. The nice thing about this is we took all the stuff that we knew ASP.NET uh, core developers loved about our DI, IOC layer, sure. uh, service wire up, uh, middleware, all that good stuff. And we said, let's do something that runs like a microservice, runs like a spinner. Yeah. Um, I call them spinners. Um, runs like a spinner. Yeah. And you can just like watch a queue or feed messages. In my case, I use it to like generate test data. So, right. you know. Um, but so it's, it's like an always running service, right? Exactly. But there's no, none of the web stuff in it. Exactly. There's, well, there's none of the web stuff except for the hosting abstractions. Okay. So we've got like all the ASP.NET Core hosting abstractions, not necessarily the web host. You can dial that in if you want to, okay. but it's really just the host runtime to be able to do services. Add transient, add singleton, all the IOC, all the logging, everything that you sure. know and love from ASP.NET Core. Nice. And we're working with other app model owners in the .NET 5 wave to actually bring that type of experience to things like Xamarin. Oh, uh, to, other, to other app models. So if you're into the DI, IOC stuff that we've done in ASP.NET Core, the concept of hosting or generic host, you're going to see that popping up more and more. Right. So um, we did an interesting experiment with uh, James Montemagno, uh, where we filed a new project, a Xamarin app, and he actually used a worker. It wasn't the worker template, but it was some of the core components. Sure. It was pretty exciting. Really? So and so then, so then your Xamarin app now could have configuration, it could have logging, it could have DI, it could have... Yeah. All those core features. All those core features. So if I already know about those things from ASP.NET Core, yep. right? Like I can Just put them in my console app, I can put it inside of my um, exactly. my mobile app with Xamarin. Exactly. exactly. Maybe even a Windows WP desktop Let's type application. Cross Maybe. our fingers. Let's cross I will fingers. see what happens. Yeah, yeah. We'll okay. see yeah, we'll see what happens by November. Okay. Like, uh, this 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 year's big wave. Fair enough. So if you want it, you can do .NET New Worker. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you're inside Visual Studio the way I am right now, I can just type in worker. Um, I don't have any in there right now because I want to do a new project. So I'll do a new project and that's when I would do a search for worker. So I'll do a search for worker right here. And what you'll see, there's the worker service, and it sits right next to the container application for Kubernetes, which is a great place for you to essentially use Azure Dev Spaces to like kind of uh, take the take the worker that you would otherwise have running locally on your computer sure. and ship it up and you know debug it in the cloud using something like Azure Dev Spaces. Yeah. So quick question about this though. Sure. So what do I have to do to get that template? You have to install .NET 3.0 or higher. That's um, it? That's it. Okay. So once you have the .NET, let's say, you know, because you're running the latest stuff, if you have the latest, for, and I'm going to say I want to enable Docker support and I'm going to run it in Linux, because mm -hmm. I'll probably run it in a Linux container. Yeah. Um, but once but I have .NET 3 you and above, exactly. I just have it. You just so have the worker it. template in there. And like I said, if we were on my Mac, I could do .NET New Worker, and I have that yeah. capability, or on Linux or any other platform where it runs. Uh, and you mentioned Windows services. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have a NuGet package that you could install into, say, a worker project sure. where you could make it run as a Windows service. So nice. instead of you having to go and create a new Windows service project, go back out to .NET Framework, yeah, yeah. you can do all those same things in the middle where it looks like everything else. I think it's use Windows services or add Windows sure, service. Sure. Um, so essentially, you get two files. One's program CS. Okay. If we were looking at program CS, you'll see we're just creating the host builder. And then we're saying services dot add hosted service because uh, all the workers inherit from. Let's open the worker up here. Uh, worker inherits from a class called background service. Yeah. And background service implements a very simple interface. If I can find get a definition. F12. Uh, F12. Oh yeah. 
Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to VS. It's been <laughs> fun. I've been on a Mac for a little while. Uh, and you'll see that I, I, it, it implements iHosted service here. So I've got start async and stop async. And then since it is this background service implementation, I've got execute async. Got and if you were to take a look in the uh, execute async method, we sort of give you you know, just a little guidance here. Just keep running. You know, um, sure, sure. as long as somebody hasn't canceled this process, just take a delay in this loop and just write, you know, the worker's running. Um, so I've got one that does a little more work. Um, pop over here. In this case, I've actually uh, made use of uh, Bogus, uh, which I think I might need to grab my license key. Uh, that's going to be unfortunate. I might not do what I needed to do. Um, but I would have to grab my license key and put it in here. Uh, this may or may not run when I try to run it locally. But essentially what Bogus is for is for generating Fake bogus data. data. You know, generating bogus Got data. It. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually generating, uh, generating a random you know, person. And when I generate that random person, I'm actually generating uh, latitude and longitude. This is the part that may, in fact, uh, blow up. If it does when I run it locally, we'll, uh, we'll turn that part off. So I'm just going to hit map.generator map because that's all we're going to do is generating maps, uh, map dots. Now the idea that I wanted to bring you and going to be a, a show later on that I might do um, is if I were to flip over to our blog here, if I, make sure this is running. if I were to flip over to the blog over here, what you will see is that we have a new blog out talking about Blazor WebAssembly. Yeah. So this is like your client side Blazor type stuff. Mm -hmm. And if I were to scroll way down in here, you'll see a part that's super exciting to myself and most of the other uh, real-time Army uh, members, the SignalR fans, yeah. is that now you have support inside of Blazor WASM for supporting uh, SignalR.NET clients. Oh, very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. So this is, yeah. a, this is a new thing people have been asking for a while. Like, I'm used to SignalR. Blazor's yeah. exciting. But it'd be great if I had my uh, Signal R. Work as well. Yeah, if yep. you know Signal R love Blazor a little bit more. So we've done that in this release. Nice. So I would definitely encourage that you come out here and take a look at it. I'll keep working on this kind of scenario demo because what I really want to do is have a background service that's generating these random points mm -hmm. and then sending them over to a Signal R hub and generating you know, points on a map. Sure, sure. So sure. Uh, hopefully that'll work. Let me actually go right here, and you'll see that we are actually generating fake data right here. That's so this awesome. is just running directly inside of my uh, window. Yeah. Uh, and I can hit exit, and if I wanted to bring in the Windows uh, service NuGet, I could run that. There's a blog on our team blog about how to do that. Yeah. There's also a blog, I don't know if Glenn's already written it, but if you're using Linux System D, you can actually install a different NuGet that will support uh, System D commands from within a worker as well. Right. So you can actually write out to System D. Now, at this point, we really care about microservices. We, we care do. about cloud stuff. So what I want to do is, uh, you know, kind of explain the really brief workflow for any container-based developer. Uh, you know, I'm going to build my image, uh, which I don't have. Do I have a Docker file in here already? I do not have a Docker file, so I would just add Docker support. So I'd right-click my project here. Did I do that already? I'm going to say, oh, it's going to manage my references. Apologies. Yeah. Well, what I think is great about this is, so we talked about we could use system D services, yep. right? We could do uh, Windows services. So, mm -hmm. like, these are operating system controlled, exactly. long running oper like events and things like that. Right, right. But, like, we could also use the same worker template for Docker containers. Exactly, for Docker containers. So, we could talk about Docker, we could talk about Kubernetes, we mm -hmm. could talk about whatever orchestrating thing that you want to do. Exactly. And if you've ever done anything with Docker containers, you see I've already got my Docker file. Uh, the wonderful tools in VS have helped, helped me to get my Docker file here. Yeah. So what I would do at this point is I would right click this and we've added this great capability to be able to right click publish. And I know some folks don't like right click publishing, but I want to clarify that what we're right click publishing here is our Docker image and we're actually publishing it into a Azure Container Registry. Nice. Now the idea behind that is that's kind of my first step. I have to take my container mm -hmm. image, put my container image into a registry, yeah. and then I can use it from within that registry to create an ACI or to deploy it to an AKS cluster or whatever I want to do here. Right. Now, so that's very similar to mm -hmm. something like Docker Hub. That's exactly right. right. That's Just exactly that right. Docker Hub is like a public instance exactly of, of right. those types of things. That's right. exactly so, what it is. And I could go in Docker Hub and I could search for like, um, verified images from different companies. Correct. Microsoft used Correct. to have some stuff on exactly. there as well. And but if you wanted a private one, right, right that just my company right. and is not exposed to the whole world on the internet, exactly. I could create some that's inside of Microsoft that's exactly um, right. Azure exactly. Uh, Container Registry. And then you can use kind of our rollback access security and controls and everything to basically yeah. say you have access to this registry, you don't have access to it, et cetera, et cetera, so people can party on it. Um, while that's publishing, because I'm going to flip over and do something kind of a part two here in a minute, but before we do, if all of this cloud native stuff is important to you out there in, in viewer land, 
I want to call out that uh, Mr. Hunter and I are going to be in Tecorama in mm -hmm. Belgium on uh, June 2nd to 4th. Yeah. And we're going to be giving a workshop on basically doing .NET Core and Cloud, and cloud Native. Nice. So you would kind of see a very practical guide as to how to walk through all these things. We're not going to get too theoretical, but there are some other great theoretical sessions that are going to be there. I would encourage you to check them out. And then if you're going to be going to uh, Dev Intersection, we're going to be doing the same workshop down in Orlando uh, later on this uh, year in April. So basically in this video, you know, we've already shown you how to kind of get started with the worker template, how yeah. to right-click publish it to a registry, which is your first step to deploying it. And we're going to come back in a minute once it's done publishing and do a second show on uh, pushing it to Azure Container Instances and maybe to AKS. Yeah, that sounds great. Base. Yeah, let's do that. So Again, in this video, we learned a little bit how we could use those worker templates that are inside of Visual Studio and, and .NET Core 3.0 to create like some really interesting services and background running things. Mm -hmm. And now we get to follow up with another video where we're going to look at creating containers and also running that stuff inside of Azure and running it in the cloud.